Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you're doing well. And it is time for a review of the brand new Shushu record, Girl with Basket of Fruit. This is the latest full-length album from California-based post-pop, post-punk, post-art, noise outfit Shushu. As always, masterminded by multi-instrumentalist and producer Jamie Stewart, Shushu also continues to boast the talents of Angela Sio, who co-produced this album along with Greg Saunier of Deerhoof fame. And in the past year, Shushu has also gained the talents of Thor Harris, who you might remember from many a Swans album, also indie veteran Jordan Giger of Hospital Ships, as well as the Appleseed cast, mostly to fill out the, uh, the live set. There's also a pretty lengthy and impressive personnel list for this album, which we are showing you right now, that features a lot of extra vocalists, a lot of extra percussion, the latter of which has not really been a super big focus on many of Shushu's past records, but uh, the band's discography has been very creatively volatile as of late. From surprise collaborations to purely experimental detours that are released exclusively online, you have the Nina Simone covers album, you have the Twin Peaks covers album, the harrowing and blood-curdling Angel Guts Red Classroom, as well as the band's return to more of a pop form on their last full-length record, Forget. So there hasn't been a whole lot of predictability in this era of Shushu's discography right now, and yet, the band continues to drop some of their most thrilling and exciting material yet. And Girl with Basket of Fruit is no exception. This record may just be nine songs and 37 minutes, but it is a powerfully twisted artistic statement that pulls absolutely no punches and is easily one of Shushu's most out there albums yet. Shushu does their best to ward off the faint of heart on this album right from the start of the record with the title track where all that percussion I was talking about earlier shows up in spades. It's one nasty lo-fi bustling beat layered on top of another battling for attention in the mix. It's messy, it's distorted, it's chaotic, it's absolutely overwhelming and even Captain Beefheart-ish in some respects. Jamie Stewart, on top of all of this instrumental madness, delivers these shrieked and shouted bits of totally absurd poetry chocked full of insane quotables. She's in love with the angel of no taxi anywhere. Her boob gets so floppy she uses it as a fan to wave away his sickening B.O. Yeah, those are really real-life things that are said on this album. I'm not joking with you. It's just so profoundly twisted with the tinkering beats and the distortion and the ravings of an absolute madman. All the sour tones laced throughout the track as well. There's also a similar vibe on the track Scissors, which was an amazing teaser cut to this record. But while there may be many moments on this record that are just too weird for words, that's not to say that what's occurring here is just totally batshit or just random, as there are quite a few themes and lyrical ideas that are repeated throughout key points on the record, like something coming out as a joke, which may be a statement on the music the band is making on this album itself, as well as jerking it into mush, are ideas that are not only mentioned in the opening track, but also the following cut as well, but this time with a much more foreboding instrumental. Thunderous distorted beats, industrial atmosphere surrounding everything, lots of hellish noise slowly building before the band goes full tilt into all these glitchy bits of demented melodies and skipping samples. And keep in mind, these are like experimental noise spoken, shouted word pieces through and through. Any elements of rock music and pop music that fans might remember from Shushu's previous releases have completely melted away on this record. On Amarji Vemu, Jamie delivers more unhinged poetry over these groaning, bow double bass notes. Eventually, his lyrics, his vocals devolve into literal babbling. <laughs> and it's an alright cut on the record, I suppose, as more low-key moments on this album goes. I do prefer the track Wrong Thing, where Jamie's more measured vocals and clear vocal melodies set against these very sad and droning and mournful synth chords are a breath of fresh air on this very relentless record. Kind of a very necessary bittersweet moment. The song Ice Cream Truck sees the sonic mayhem getting turned up once again on this record. All I have to say about this track is what a horrible way to treat sound. Not to act like I dislike this song, I, I do like it, in fact I love it, but the sounds on this track are so dusty and claustrophobic. I feel like I'm sitting in the middle of a meat locker, but instead of like 
hanging animal corpses, it's, it's strung up and hooked and decapitated sounds. It's just a pile of sound corpses and Jamie's poetry is essentially him just like jamming a flag into the pile. Hair dyed blonde for nobody, nobody move. I also love the disturbing beats and samples on the track Pumpkin Attack on Mommy and Daddy, which features these weird, overwhelming, sometimes pitched, sometimes skipping vocal snippets throughout the track, wailing Halloween synths, a beat that sounds like someone's trying to make a club banger from hell. But easily the most disturbing song on the entire record has to go to Mary Turner, Mary Turner, which is honestly one of the most disturbing songs she Shushu has ever put out in their entire discography, and if you know anything about Shushu, they have a pretty dark, despondent discography. Now, this track is quite literally about a woman in the early 1900s who was lynched for protesting the lynching of her husband. And given Jamie's complete lack of fear on this record when it comes to lyrics and when it comes to vocals so far, it should be no surprise that he takes it very far on this track as far as the subject matter goes. So far that anybody who has a soul by the end of this track should have their skin crawling, and anyone listening to this track who's never really reflected on the history of hatred in this country that led to barbaric practices like lynching might have to just sit down after this cut and have a very deep reflective think. As these are practices that are not that old, not that long forgotten, and the effects of which are very far reaching and cannot merely be forgotten in a few generations. The closing cut on this thing, Normal Love, is actually one of the prettier and more serene tracks on the album, but it's actually Still a kind of disturbing duet of sorts between Jamie Stewart and Eugene Robinson of Oxbow fame. There are some very gentle pianos on this track, some upright bass, Jamie and Eugene's vocals a twist and uh, sort of meld together in this beautifully horrifying way. I feel like I'm listening to poltergeists singing together because they're trapped forever on this earthly plane they don't want to be on, so they're trying to... Uh, sing their pain away. Man, this is a very potent and hard-hitting album. What a shocking, unique, ugly, and gorgeously dark record, and undoubtedly a high point in Shushu's discography so far. And really encouraging, too, to see a group of Shushu's age and of their talent still coming out with groundbreaking and cutting edge and exciting material. Good on Jamie and good on Angela for never giving up on pushing this project in a direction where it continues to give listeners a unique one-of-a-kind experience. I'm feeling a light too decent nine on this thing. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Shushu, Girl with Basket of Fruit, forever.